and there really is more to follow because it's Father's Day, June 1987. And we've trekked over to Sunrise, Florida to have one of those delicious repasts with Judy, Egon, and Jill. Let's listen. Yeah, I'll wear that. Feeling a lot camera here. When I sell the house, when I sell, when I sell the house, you try to sell it after me. Uh, we have a list with another family. We have no room in my park, but it's a different. He wanted it, so we gave him three. Nobody gets the ass. Going away for her, she never shows up. That's the same as Sid. You know. I usually don't eat it, but I'll eat it today because it's good melon. Well, this melon is very good. Is it good? I, yeah. You know, very I've been good. buying melon all week. It's been delicious. It's even better. I know. And uh, when, it, it went up to 119, then it went down to 89. Yeah, they were 89. And, and now when I bought it. Yeah. I don't work two offices when I work in Microwave cooking is easy. You, you, buy, you buy a TV dinner and you stick it in the microwave oven. Yeah, maybe instead of using this glass. Where should we put this? You gotta hold it for the rest of the meal. <laughs> Joe, why don't you put it up behind you? Yeah. Hurry, it's gonna be cool. I hear a joke with this. See, I tell you, you don't get a chance to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> As they say in the nightclub business, last call for alcohol. All right, Judy, you can, you can sit down too. Sit to the woman. Yes, sir. You don't have can get some the second time around. Judy, you want a baked potato? You want some string cheese? That's it. Showtime's over. I invested into a trust department. Really? Yeah. Son, yeah. When they see these grapes, it's on my grapes. I bought a sour. I thought I understood. I don't want to be in it. You would be taking a loss if I got on the bonds. I'll take a loss. You lose the commission, then. No, they charge. They don't charge a commission. They charge one percent a year. Should buy some land. I, uh, no, I don't that, know. That's, I don't that's, buy that's, land in that's a risk too if you find you vacant just, land. Condo, condo's always going to be vacant. You want a condo? Yourself. You want to buy a condo? Oh, special effects. You're going to live in it, then that's a good idea. I'm all for that. You got enough money, you could put a nice size down payment on a condo. Now that might be an they they there's a way of going there. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, that's a good idea. 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 Yeah, you have to uh, eat. If you, you put twenty percent down, it's ten thousand dollars. No, $10, we don't get so good tax on that. You don't want any ice cream? No. Really? Just, just, just the cake? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'm an ice cream lover, <laughs> but my God, <laughs> I should have a smaller piece of cake. Why don't we give this to Jill? I'll take my own. Mm. That's mine. Yeah. Good ice cream. You gotta get you with your mouth. It's when you thought it was safe to go to the table. Right. Believe it or not. There's no gas station on 84, is there? No gas station on that much. Yeah. On the corner? Oh, no, we're not coming up high. Uh, well, that's a golf course, huh? Is yeah. that a rec building over there? They have parties? That, that, that's a, yeah, that's a, what they call a, uh, what do they call it? Uh, And from the east coast of Florida, we go to the west coast of Florida. Lovely Sarasota, and instead of it being June, it is now July 19, 1987. And we're staying at the Azure Tides, right on Lido Beach, just outside of Sarasota, Florida. We're going to be doing a convention for the 
sport craft boat people, but right now it's time for a little beach and relaxation. Kind of typical summer weather in Sarasota today. Clouds welling up, rain's coming, lots of it, and then perhaps some gradual clearing. But the birds don't care. And the real beach people, they don't care either. This is one of those places that's really crowded all winter long and at very high prices. Actually, it's a suite hotel. We had a living room, a kitchen, and a nice bedroom. And there is Sarah, and there is Sam. And we are talking to the great Jack Castle, kind of the spokesperson for the Castle family show. Castles have their own Greyhound style bus coming in from Minnesota and they've driven in for this performance. In fact, they liked it so much that two days later we still saw the bus parked on Lido Beach. There's Sam and there's daughter Sarah. And here are the birds. And you know the beach is really for the birds today because somebody has some feed for them. Actually, they're in a parking lot and we spotted this old dilapidated van parked there and somebody from the van decided that they wanted to feed these animals. And these creatures, uh, they don't need much encouragement, believe me. Strange that as soon as the food supply runs out, they know to take off and go elsewhere in search of additional vittles. There's that old dilapidated van we were talking about. I, I was aware that there was a difficulty. Uh, well, we were telling you about our suite with its living room and bedroom and kitchen. Now we're listening to the Iran scam contra things and trying to get squared away. But anyhow, we've got to make some business calls here. That's the only way to keep the wheels of commerce turning. So we're fortunate in finding a phone booth. We had a phone in the room, of course. But you've got to save bucks when you're on these business trips. So that's what we're doing, saving bucks. And I don't know about this bird, I don't know what he was trying to do, but we thought we'd capture him on video anyhow. Water, moving water, the incessant waves of the Gulf of Mexico, always holding a fascination for us. Don't know why. They're fascinating to watch. And always the wonderment, the amazement of the discovery made at the shoreline. 
a different colored shell, some new sea creature, whatever. And here we see man's creation, building these edifices, these water side buildings, juxtaposed against these beautiful birds. So graceful in the air, aren't they? I don't know what it is about pelicans. People say they're ugly. I say they're beautiful. I say when they're in, when they're in flight, they're gorgeous. Footprints in the sand to be erased by the next high tide, to be seen only once by us like these shells to be washed away. What a perfect dive. That's how to get supper, you know. The never-ending ebb and flow of the Gulf of Mexico's waters. I guess when it's 90 degrees in the shade, this is probably the best way one could think of to cool off. Gulf waters were very calm this evening. Just perfect to cool off. These little critters, well, they're not so little. They, they go out on the water with them. Unfortunately, we didn't get any video of them out on the water, but they pull them out on the water and you pedal them. Two people pedal them, as a matter of fact. And when you pedal them, you go places. Along the shoreline, that is. You don't want to go too far. And here's Trudy Kleiner. I should say, there's Trudy Kleiner. Hi. No question that you're going to get a good tan out there today, honey. So you better put some of that number 15 sunscreen on right away. He's got his tan already. A little cold, isn't it? Oh, it's up in the 80s. It's really not that bad. Trudy's out there testing the waters, so to speak. And the waters are nice and calm, as we said earlier. Beach is just placidly beautiful. Nature forever changing its pattern along the coastline and even the intensity of the waves forever changing with the wind that drives them from above. Kids always having a good time at these beach locations. Never seem to get too bored down along the Gulf of Mexico. Here comes Trudy out of the water. Looks like we finally made it down to the Sarasota Hyatt Hotel.
the public library was right across the street from the Hyatt. Now we're just taking a primary exploratory stroll around the hotel grounds. Looking out through the window at the dock boat storage area. And just when we came in, they were having the final moments of their Sportcraft Boat Company breakfast meeting. So a little pep talk probably going on there right now. We drove up Highway 41 North, and just outside of town, on the west side of Highway 41, is a magnificent 38-acre estate of the late John Ringling. This is where he and his bride lived, not in this building, but we'll be showing you the building they resided in, their casa, they called it, a little later. We're surprised at the vast amount of sculpture that seemed to be abounding in the, on the premises and the grounds. Some of them quite uh, artistically creative, unique, ornate, detailed, and others on the primitive side. But our conclusion is that Mr. Ringling had a particular affinity for statuary. This was called the Rose Garden. I think it was considerably larger than it appears on screen. I don't know if we saw any roses blooming. I don't remember seeing any. Here we have the FICA tree, which has vast root systems extending above and below the ground and which has the ability to spread many, many feet away from where its point of origin is. I thought that was terrible. Beautiful statuary and look what they did to it. They, they uh, scrolled their initials in it. Now we're looking at the casa at the house of Mr. and Mrs. Ringling. This is in the ground, sort of a sundial, a uh, compass as it were. And I thought this was such a complex and beautiful piece of floor work. This we surmised was a swimming pool at one time and they filled it in. But all around his casa or estate or castle, we found genuine Italian marble ornate brickwork, ornate statuary, just incredible. Well, Trudy's taking a picture of Sid taking a video. We haven't seen that picture yet. I hope it came out okay. Even the gatehouse is something to behold. We couldn't build that today for $50,000. Here, I just had to share with you the the beautiful marble work. And this is the dock area where they docked the boats. And they went through all this expense just to finish off the dock area. Some of the dock area was cordoned off because the, the uh, structural integrity of the dock area was undermined. It wasn't safe to walk. This is the so-called back of the mansion. Anybody else will be proud to call this the front yard or the front entrance. But this is what Mr. Ringley referred to as his backyard. Notice the palm trees all in a line. Looks like this critter's having a great time out there. Taking a bath in a, the biggest, the world's biggest bathtub. I just wondered if he was ever going to quit.
Here's Atlas doing his best to hold the world up. All on his shoulders. Sometimes you feel that way yourself, don't you? Like you're carrying the whole world on your shoulders. That's the way Atlas felt. Here you get an idea of some of the detail work that these artists, sculptors went to. There we have the baby suckling on the wolf, I believe, or the pig. That's supposed to be a very famous piece of sculpture work. They say it takes about three hours. Oh, there's our friend the squirrel, huh? It takes about three hours to really traverse all the pathways and byways of this estate, and I believe that's very true. And we have more of those ringling statues that we've been seeing throughout this segment. But this is kind of a graveyard we discovered, way off in the corner somewhere, where I guess the secondary or second string statues are stored or perhaps they need to be serviced, maintained. I think this gadget needs to be serviced and maintained. Did you ever see an old Mack truck in 1987? Well, we just saw one and there it is on screen. It was rusty. It was uh, really in bad shape. One last look now at the Rose Garden area. Here's a guitar that's not in such good shape. It only has four strings. And maybe some of the ancient guitars that they used only had four strings. Perhaps that's the case. Notice again the statuary every few feet as you go towards the Rose Garden. This is the building that's used to restore the old circus wagons. This is where they apply new coats of paint, gilding. Here's a tree that really out, has outdone itself. It's just stretched right across the path. Must be 30, 40 feet long, this branch that extends in a horizontal direction. Kind of interesting, we thought. And what's really interesting is that the people at the park there, at the Ringling, Ringling Estate, decided not to destroy the tree or destroy the branch. One of those massive palm trees that take years and years and years to grow, there for us to view and enjoy, as is this unending array of statuary. We're on our way out of the Ringling area now. And as we wend our way out, we notice these fellows working at the lake or pond. Well, I think we've pretty well covered the Ringling premises, so let's get back to those terns and seagulls and other aquatically oriented fowl who frequent the beaches of Sarasota, Florida. And they're having a good time, aren't they? Love the way they ruffle their feathers and strut around. They just wait there and the food comes to them. up a good appetite, right? This is kind of interesting. They take this John Deere farm type tractor. Instead of using it for its intended purpose, they hook this gadget on the back and every morning they go up and down the beach, only they're part of the beach, that is, that they own or control, and they smooth out the sand. Can you imagine how many 
diamond rings and dollar bills and whatever are buried in the sand. Is it a prehistoric monster? A monolithic giant? No. It's Sid with his zenith camcorder looking at himself as a silhouette in the morning sunshine. Ah, the simplistic beauty of Mother Nature, eh? I guess there's an old expression about as free as a bird. And this group of birds personifies that freedom, that freedom of movement, going anywhere. The universe is their backyard. Wherever they wish to go, they can fly, as long as they can handle the climate. Back to our friends, the pelicans who seem to know how to find fish that take fishermen hours to find. How they see them from up there, I don't know. Somebody's coming down that beach and she looks mighty familiar. Oh yes, that's Trudy, all right. Getting her morning exercise while yours truly does his morning camera work, or videography as it were. Oh, somebody else is out there this morning. Well, yes, somebody else is out there this morning. Time to take a little drive around town, get a little feel for the Sarasota, Florida area. I know it's hard to hold that camera still when you're in the car and you're driving, but we do the best we can do without tying it down. This is called Bird Key, and we decided we were going to visit Bird Key, but we didn't because there was one of those little checkpoints there, one of those security things there. We decided, well, we weren't going to try and fight our way into Bird Key. We probably could have gotten in there, but we just didn't push the issue. Here's the causeway going uh, east, and here's Trudy driving the car. Back towards the city area. We were out on Lido Beach, or Lido Key, as they call it, and we we're going back towards the downtown area of Sarasota. stopped at the marina in town and inspected Le Barge, where you can take a sightseeing cruise during the day or a dinner and entertainment cruise in the evening. Hmm, exciting. And look at the food, even topless oysters. Wow. I didn't notice pelican on the menu, but I think some fishermen would like to see pelican on the menu once in a while. Those critters love to get involved with one's fishing lines. We uh, couldn't help but notice how each pelican has his own little perch. I wonder if E.T. finally did come home. Nice boat, anyhow, even if E.T. didn't get home. Now, if you sell enough of those Mary Kay cosmetics, you can make a conquest. Namely, you can own a boat or maybe one of those pink Cadillacs that Mary Kay always talks about. There's the number to call if you want to buy them. And if you're in the boat renting business, the best thing to do is to put it right on your license plate. Cost a little extra, but chalk it up to advertising. And for those who are just bored with walking around, there's always the jet ski. Looks like it could be a little dangerous, 
but I don't know. Now we're looking north towards the downtown area from the marina. There were quite a few private yachts, ships, sailboats, like the Senorita, docked right here at the municipal docks. I was watching this fellow. He seemed to be very busy, even though he doesn't look like he's working hard. It was hot out there in the sun. And what he was doing was trying to clean that rather large private craft. And he was at work a good part of the time that we were taking a brief respite at the park bench that was facing the water. Just seemed to be so busy. Didn't stop for very long during the time we were there. You see, we stopped and we just took it easy for a while. We weren't going to work that hard, no way. Too hot. Now we're looking west towards Lido Key. And now we're finding out that you can have all the creature comforts, all the comforts of a landlubber type home, carpeting, plants. You can have all these nice things out on the water. All you have to do is remember to take them out there. Our family's growing up. This is and you get pelicans too. Quite a set of antics this young fella goes through, eh? He could be a clown in the circus if he rehearsed a little bit more. Looks like we're back on the road again. There's a place called Siesta Key, and we decided to take a ride south towards Siesta Key. And that's exactly what we did. They had this New England style, nautical type place down there. Where there are restaurants and clothing stores and jewelry stores. And there's even a small pleasure craft or uh, for charter craft, it takes people out. It was kind of interesting. On one side there were condos and on the other side were the commercial and retail enterprises. This is the boat we were referring to. See us at the boat yard, that's where it was docked. This is the intracoastal waterway we're looking at, friends. And those are some birds I discovered way up on the roof. Took the telephoto lens and took a good look at them. They're still hard to see. They're a long ways away. Yes, we really enjoyed our visit to beautiful Sarasota and environs. There's a lot to see there, a lot to do, and an awful lot to enjoy. A lot of exploring to do. There's Longboat Key that we hardly explored at all. Runs about 12 miles north and south. One of the out islands or 